This is the, this is the crux of Christianity. If you remove the resurrection, we are just wasting our time. Because in the resurrection, he conquered spiritual death. In the resurrection, he conquered sin. He conquered every curse. And he conquered it for us. Everything he did, he did for us. You see, that Ephesians 1 is a prayer, chapter 1, from about 14, is a prayer you can pray for yourself. Paul said that they will have revelation of what Jesus has done. You see, when you read the Gospels, you will read about they nailed him to the cross. When you come to the epistles of Paul and other ones, you will realize the gospel is like a group photograph. He died for everybody. The epistle is like an x-ray. He begins to show you the inside of the thing. What Jesus really did is x-rayed in the epistles. You can see it clearly that you are included in that victory. I was included in that victory. Is there an amen somewhere? You can note that Matthew 27, 52 and 53 about the graves being opened. In the resurrection of Jesus, you are made a new creation. You are the righteousness of God with unlimited access. In the resurrection of Jesus, you are made a new creation. Hallelujah. You are the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we know it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is what? A new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Ephesians 2, 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Hallelujah to Jesus. You just look like Jesus on the inside. I say you look like Jesus on the inside. Colossians 1, 18. And he's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Jesus is what? The firstborn from the dead. That in all things, he might have preeminence. If there's his firstborn, there are other born. Hallelujah. We are the people, the other people that were raised with him. He's the firstborn, but we were raised together with him. Jesus was the first person to be born again. I said Jesus was the first person to be born again. From spiritual death into spiritual life. Friend, you see, when he went on the cross, he became sin. He became, that's why Gethsemane was a place of struggle. How am I going to take the nature I have never had? The first man sinned in the garden. The second Adam got victory in Gethsemane, in the garden. You see, he went there and accepted to become sin. He accepted the nature of sin. And they couldn't touch him before that time. But the moment he took my sin on the cross, the moment he took my sin on the cross, he, he became sin for me. Every curse, they were placed upon him. He became sin for you and I, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. In Christ today, you have access by the blood of Jesus. When, if, if we are to have an x-ray of you on the inside of you, you look exactly like Jesus. You carry the DNA of Jesus. When we look at you, the old person has died. There's a new person on your inside. You are carrying the life of God. Romans 8, 11 says, If the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. Friend, this morning, you are a God carrier this morning. Sister, this morning, you are a God carrier this morning. Brother, you are a God carrier this morning. You are carrying the presence of God. You have the same nature of God on your inside. You are a new man, new woman on the inside. You look like Jesus Christ on the inside. And I want to say to you, what a privilege to be like God on the inside. When God looks at you today, he cannot see your past because the blood of Jesus is stronger than your past. It's stronger than your weaknesses. It's stronger than your failure. I want to say there's a blood that has blotted out your history and has made you a new person. One translation says, the still translation says, I consider myself as having died, but now I'm having a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. I consider myself as having died, but now I'm enjoying a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. There's a new man on my inside. The old guy you used to know, 
died and went away. In 1976, when I gave my life to Jesus, a new man started to live in here. I look like Jesus on the inside. Every principality, every demon, every familiar spirit, they know there's a new man on your inside. I am telling you something. In the spirit, that's why Paul says, henceforth, I know no man after the flesh. You are one with Jesus. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The head and the body don't have two different bank accounts. You don't say your head, um, Rolly, Rolly's head has account in GT. The body has account in Zenit. I mean, how can that work? When you go with your head, your body must follow you. We are one with Jesus. I look like Jesus on the inside. If they say it's running in the family, ask them which family. If they say it's killing them in the family, ask them which family. I have a new family. I have a new DNA. I'm carrying the nature of God. Ah, I want to say to you, if they have never succeeded in that family, you are the first one to make history because you are carrying God. You cannot fail because God cannot fail. It's not because of who you are in the natural is because you are the child of a king the king of kings and the lord of lords the one that can manifest exceeding great power that demons tremble at the mention of that name i'm telling you demons tremble at the mention of that name that name belongs to you Peter said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, give I thee. It's a family name. We belong to the family of God. I want to say to you, where there's a casting down, definitely there shall be a lifting up for you. 